Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 107. On Now You Know. This show is brought to you by our amazing, wonderful, stupendously awesome Patreons who help support the show. Um, we could not do, we wouldn't look this good without uh, the Patreons. And we wouldn't look this good without our SFSF t-shirts. So yes. if you want to buy one, it helps the show. So go check out SFSF and the link is down below. Did you know, Jesse, that the Model 3 parked out in the driveway there is the safest car? Yes. So NHTSA has just released its safety rating last week. The Model 3 has gotten a perfect five-star safety rating, not overall, in every category and every subcategory. Yeah. In every way that the NHTSA cares about the car being safe, it is safe to the maximum extent of being safe. Right. Now, I mean, let's show you some of the crash tests that they've done so yes. far. And it's hard when you're watching these crash tests, first of all, because I tear up because it's a Model 3 being crashed. <laughs> and I think that, you know, Rich from Rich Rebuilds probably watches it with glee because he knows he'll be getting parts for his next project. But uh, yeah. you and I watch it and we're just like, oh, poor Model 3. When you watch it, um, it's hard if you've just watched a few crash tests because you don't know what you're looking at. And right. every crash looks horrible. Right. But it, the car is destroyed. It looks broken after right. it's done. And it is broken. The uh, the point of a crash test is not to see you know this isn't this this isn't the the fifties and sixties where you just have a big fender and it's just <laughs> bam you stopped and there's a little dent you know like uh, the crumple zone is hugely important because what you're actually trying to protect is not the car the humans the humans inside the car were very squishy now what you get on a model three just like all the s and the x are is the bottom um battery pack which stays super rigid so when you smash the car in many different ways like for instance from the front or from the side it stays rigid and keeps the car intact right um and that's so, what you're seeing here yeah i mean the pole test you're sliding into a pole oh like a, like, like if you're in an accident yeah I mean, this is like a worst case scenario, you a know, point a load. point yeah. load across the whole side of the car. And it does fantastic. I mean, the, the pole does not get very far into the cabin, um, inches. And, you know, that, that side airbag deploys mm -hmm. and it's just a poofy. Yeah, there's airbags everywhere. Poof, you know? And also, you know, what's amazing to me is that the front windshield, when they do like the front uh, crash test, didn't even break. Didn't even break. I mean, that was, I mean, you could see it vi like a... Uh, Resonate. The shock wave mm -hmm. go through it. Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. But now, let's look at another car, Jesse, because I think we need a little help here. Like, yeah. So this is what, a Kia? Yes. Um, and it's doing a crash. And, and what's the difference here? Um, so you can see that, you know, the penetration of this pole test really shows the, like... How, oh, wow, that how, went way into the compartment. Yeah, and so there's a pole now inside right. where the car used to be. Right. There's now a pole you just slant, like... It's, because it's, there's, as, it's there, as if someone was like, boom, right. you know, like just really gets you. Right. And there wasn't much to stop it in a Kia or most other ice cars. Right. There's not a lot going on near the driver's compartment, well, especially and, below you. And in the front of an ice car, there's an engine that's trying to make its way back into the passenger exactly. compartment. Exactly. So when you're when you're seeing it, you know, it doesn't look, it in some ways looks better as a crash from the outside because it doesn't crumple as much, but you really want that crumple. You want it to just... You want, you know, the, the impact, you know, from the speed that you're going to zero miles an hour to take as long as possible. Right. You know, it, you're hitting the brakes essentially, except using your car to crumple it. Um, and all that crumple zone really helps. The Model 3 doesn't have a big gas engine in the front. In the Kia, in all gas cars with engines in the front, of course, you are slamming. The engine does not compress. It's a big block of aluminum right. or steel. Uh, one thing that Elon was tweeting about um, some very uh, detailed explanations is that um, because of the distribution of weight of the car, that when you get hit, your car is going to be able to to spin more freely. And you might be like, well, what, what does that have to do with anything? So in a gas car, you obviously have the engine in the front, big, heavy thing. Um, and then, you know, the weight is... is a lot further distributed, further apart, kind of like a, a, as Elon describes it, as like a, a, a barbell or a dumbbell. Mm -hmm. Very hard to get those things spinning. And so when you slam into something, that force just stays. It just, boof. Um, but if you could spin out of the way, 
you, oh, you get you, less, a glancing blow. You get of. less energy imparted into the car. So that's that's another interesting thing. And another thing he was tweeting about is that there's less of a chance that you'll get into an accident in, in, in a Tesla because autopilot is there to protect you. Right. What's also amazing is 1,124 sales of Model 3 Performance Editions in the past two weeks. That is about $80 million in revenue past two weeks for what is essentially uh, the most expensive Model 3 on the market. This is this is the smartest move, I think. The Performance Model 3 is so smart. You get this very high profit margin car, which they really do need in the beginning, and they made it amazingly. I wasn't, you know, when the Model 3 was announced and we were waiting in line that yeah. day, I was thinking the Model 3 was going to be a Corolla. Like, mm -hmm. I thought it would be affordable, good range. That's all I cared about. A good about, car. Right? Like, yay. Yeah. I didn't think it would be sexy. I didn't think it would be fun to drive. I didn't think any of those things until we were at the Model 3 uh, unveil and we got to ride in one. I was like, wait a minute, what is this car? Right. Before the Model 3 announcement, we hadn't seen it. Right. And we were just expecting, yeah, like a Corolla or like a Bolt kind of, I mean, we knew it was a sedan, but I mean, that kind of level of right. car. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's so it's smart. Crazy. And I mean, it's selling and it's keeping the brand really high because, yeah. you know, it's not like they're varying it in terms of you know different kind of model threes it's no. just the model three performance looks the same as a model three right it's a model three um except that this one is basically a model s and uh every car magazine is raving about it so if you can get your hands on a base model three that's really exciting for you because everyone is like oh dude that model three is so cool dude so we've learned some more things about tesla ap version 9 richard ulmer tweeted at elon he said when will the built-in dash cam happen this is not the first nor the second i've seen and i had a hit and run disheartening time to look third party i was hoping to wait so sad this is happening and then if you see here this is a model 3 that's been vandalized mm -hmm. elon responded good news on this front tesla engineering rallied and this will be part of version 9 going through final testing now ryan mccaffrey tweeted elon and asked him is this going to be in the first like come out with version 9 mm -hmm. right away and elon did kind of back backtrack a little bit he said yes albeit a beta version will improve with version 9.1 so tell me what does this mean a, a dash cam built into version 9 so i mean th the car has cameras it's got a, a boatload of cameras in the front it's mm -hmm. got cameras all around the whole car yep um and why you know why would you have to get a separate third party camera when the car has the cameras you know now you have this and, and it wouldn't, it would, it wouldn't even be able to do what the car could do right because it, right. it could the car can see all the way around it that's very true so i mean there's a lot that we don't know about version 9 but we have a lot of conjecturing to do i think you know first of all do all the cameras, do, do all the cameras, are they all a part of the dash cam? I think that would make a whole lot of sense. It's That'd just be... a lot of data though. But I mean, in a regular dash cam that you yeah. buy third party, it loops uh, for the most part. It puts as much as it can onto the card and then it loops for like, you get half an hour or an hour or whatever before it erases what was there. Unless you're in an accident, in which case it stops and saves it. Right. Or, or you tell it to save it. Right, so, and it'll save a chunk. I think that there's a lot of really smart stuff that they could put into it because obviously you have every sensor uh, of the car available to you whereas a normal dash cam is just reliant on like a like a oh so wait, you're sensor. saying that as someone walked up to the car it could turn on the camera system and then start recording for instance like if you got within 32 feet of it it would sense movement and it would like maybe turn on very true i mean yeah it could use uh, ultrasonic sensors it could use radar it could use uh, just the vision of the camera itself so, I mean, this could be the best security system ever built into a car. Into a car, yeah, uh, as a as sort of a base. And you know what? Module. Now that you're saying this, this could be used for people, right? Because if you got out of your car and you got, uh, you know, injured by somebody or whatever, it could be recording that data. It's true. I mean, it could turn into like a little. I mean, it could make everything around it a little bit more secure because if you're in a parking garage and you're like, oh, no, it looks like I'm going to get mugged. Maybe you run over to the car and all of a sudden you're like, you know, there's cameras, there's cameras, don't mug me. I don't know if that would work, that, but that's at really least you'd good. catch the dang guy. So is this going to be a service? I don't know because, I mean, obviously, if you – how are you going to get this stuff? Because it's not like there's a little SD card in the car that we know about. Right. I haven't found it. You know, so you, it's not like you just pull out and be like, so, I mean, maybe, here's my footage. You know, you have to – But, I mean, maybe to, this goes to your app or maybe it goes to your account. Right, which means that it would have to go through – you know, maybe this is for the, the premium connectivity package or something like that. Maybe you, there's different levels, different tiers like, you know, a gigabyte, 12 gigabytes, a terabyte, you know, like maybe – because, I mean – I don't know. 
Because another thing we're just learning about the new version of AP9 from Electrek is that uh, two things. One is that waypoints don't appear to be in this latest version that's coming out, which is something we were excited about, yeah. but hopefully we'll be there. And the other thing is that when you're going to, it, it's supposed to change lanes if it's going to take, say, an off ramp. And we initially had reported that you would hit your stock um, to, to okay it, basically. To right, it would lanes. ask you first. Um, and now it appears that in this version that you don't okay it, that basically if, you're, if it wants to take the off ramp, it'll change lanes. I think, I, I think it's smart. I think that uh, I'm a little worried about that, but uh, maybe, maybe, I think it just takes some getting needs used to. To be some oversight, but okay. I think that they, when they were testing it, they realized, you know, is this is this a useful feature if you're basically flicking a stock just like you do for, you know, getting over a lane? Um, obviously, the prompt would be nice, but I mean, I, I think it'd be pretty cool. Okay. I mean, why roll out a half measure? All right. Well, Elon tweeted out that he's accepting an offer to help. So again, our friend Ryan McCaffrey from the Ride the Lightning podcast, which is awesome, by the way, and you should listen to, um, he just tweeted out, a lot of Tesla owners, including myself, would be delighted to volunteer for free to help with deliveries in times like this. We can't do their paperwork, but we can do orientations. It's fun to educate new owners and see their joy and enthusiasm. Elon got back and said, Wow, thanks for offering to help. The coming week is incredibly intense. If any current Tesla owners who'd like to help educate new owners could head to Tesla delivery centers during midday on Saturday, Sunday, and morning or evening on weekdays, that would be super appreciated. I think that... Uh, we should go. Yeah, I think that we're going to go. I think we're going to go help uh, orientate uh, some people to their new cars. But you know how we can help even more than just... The, I mean, because we need to multiply our... Effect. Our efforts uh, here. Yeah. We've got a video, a complete guide to the Model Three that just part one just came out. Right, and I mean, I know it doesn't replace a human, yep. but I think this could be super helpful if you're about to go get your car, or if you're about to go help. Um, this could be a good refresher. Make sure you know absolutely everything, because obviously you need the feedback uh, with the the person picking up their car to be like, I understand what you're saying, or that kind of techno jargon, doopy doopy, doesn't make any sense to me. And Jesse's really good at it because he's done a lot of test rides. A lot of people. test rides. Um, and of course, this is with the version eight software. So when version nine comes out, we're gonna have to make a new one. And then get this, Model 3 buyers in the LA metro area told Electric that Tesla's local delivery manager, Jeremy Pomp, reached out to them to offer this new service. He wrote in an email, I am helping hand deliver your Tesla Model 3 in the LA metro area. This door-to-door -door service is called Tesla Direct. So they're going to bring the car to your home or office. And he continued, this Saturday and Sunday, we are offering free Tesla Direct service to your home or office. This is an exciting opportunity to get your hands on your car sooner and without having to go pick it up. I'm a little confused because I would think that sending customers to a Tesla showroom would be the fastest, most efficient way to get cars out. Otherwise, you got to get, like I would assume, two Tesla employees to hop in a car or two cars, basically, to drive it to someone's house so they can get back. Um... It, I don't know. Do, uh, why is that faster? Any ideas? Um, I think that they care about the experience, the user experience. I think that that's a good way to... Oh, just do it in their ensure. comfortable environment? like. Yeah. And also, I think that if <laughs> the, the place could be packed, I mean, that's your true. physical space could be limited. Um, whereas employees, you can just be like, hey, you, you, and you, let's go deliver some cars. I think it'd be a fun job. All right. More free supercharging. Elon had said that free supercharging referral perk would end on September 16th, but... Tesla just announced that free supercharging would continue on inventory cars and Model 3 performance until the end of September. So if you use our referral code, um, not only will you get a ride in the next generation Roadster, you will also get free supercharging for life, which is very good. By the way, only our referral code gets you a ride in the next generation Roadster because right. we have to drive it out to you. Right. No and, one, and no one else crazy. is no one doing crazy it. enough to right, do that. because yeah. we're nuts. Right. Tesla's putting a big push on because September 30th is the end of the quarter and they want to meet Elon's guidance mm -hmm. of how many Model 3. So that's why they're doing this. There's more FUD attacks on Tesla. You've mm -hmm. heard it at the water cooler, right? Oh, it happens every day, I'm sure. Every day. And I mean, let's just go through some of these. Like last Tuesday, you may remember that some FUDDy news outlets like CNBC started running a story that went something like this. Elon and Tesla were under a Department of Justice investigation. Extra, extra, read all about it. The stock dropped about 20 points in the middle of the day. Right. This is how Tesla responded. Last month, following Elon's announcement that he was considering taking the company private, Tesla received a voluntary request for documents from the DOJ and has been cooperative in responding to it. We have not received a subpoena, 
a request for testimony, or any other formal process. We respect the DOJ's desire to get information about this and believe that the matter should be quickly resolved as they review the information they have received. This doesn't sound like the headlines, does it? So, I mean, it's like if I, um, you know, was like, oh, I, I went to the supermarket the what? other day. What? You were running out of food? Jesse was running out of food. Just, he I was would... almost dying of hunger. I just needed to Next. get some onions. That's how it works, folks. Right. It's just like they just run with. Like, they just twist. What's the, they spin how can it. I make it as exciting as possible? Well, remember after the Joe Rogan podcast, right afterwards, uh, there was a report that uh, Elon was being investigated by the Air Force, and they were going to take away his top secret credentials. Well, the Air Force spokesperson just told The Verge last week that it's inaccurate that there is an investigation. We'll need some time to determine the facts and the appropriate process to handle the situation. Right. So again, so, that. What they do is they print some big headline. That's what you remember at the water cooler. Right. You don't remember the retraction later when it turns out that wasn't true. Right. Now all that's stuck in your head is this fake news story. Right. And I want to point out this um, from Clean Technica. So Chan and Boss um, has analyzed news headlines and come up with this very cool ratio of the Tesla positive stories to the Tesla negative stories in the first uh, weeks of September. So in the first week of September, there's 208 Tesla-related headlines that they researched, and these are in major media outlets. And out of those 208 headlines, guess how many were negative? Uh, 98. 98? So you're thinking half of them? Yeah. 155 were negative. Ugh. 26 were positive, 27 were neutral. So you can see that here in this graph. And yeah. then we've also got this neat chart here that they've got of listing the reporters and how many of their stories were neutral, positive, and negative. Right. And I just think it's important for you to just peruse this list and mentally make a note of the reporters who just write negative stories. Because let's remember, there's not a whole lot to be negative about at Tesla right now. Right. The company is doing amazing. Right. They're growing. Norway gobbles up EVs. 22.8% of European EV sales are in Norway. Wow. From January to June this year, 88,286 EVs were sold in Europe, and Norwegians bought 20,145 of them. Yet Norway represents less than 1% of the European car market overall. Wow. I also want to point out that this is before the Model 3, the Audi e-tron, the Jaguar I-Pace, and the Mercedes EQC have even been available. So, I mean, they're buying up basically uh, Nissan Leafs, uh, Renault Zoe's, Ampera E's, I don't even know what they're like. Yeah. And Teslas. I mean, S model and S's and X's. Yeah. That's the big one. Yeah. yeah. They're not buying these yet, though, Jesse, but mm -hmm. these are really cool yeah. looking. So this is the VW ID Buzz Cargo. Mm -hmm. We've seen the passenger version a right. while ago, but this is the concept for the cargo version and some cool specs on this. I want to give a big shout out to our uh, viewer, Karsten, who went to the car show in Germany and got some. Uh, up close footage of this mm -hmm. but anyway so you can get this in a couple different batteries uh the 48 kilowatt hour or the 111 kilowatt hour battery wow. and so what range does that give you top range that can give you 550 kilometers or 342 miles of range with the wltp testing um which is a lot closer to realistic realistic that's fantastic yeah you're going to have a 150 kilowatt motor if you get the rear wheel drive and there's an optional all wheel drive Top speed of 160 kilometers an hour. That's 100 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. It's going to have a heads-up display. It'll have 230 volt outlets for tools or equipment. Awesome. It'll have level four autonomy, perhaps. Yep. Um, they mentioned that. Yeah. 150 kilowatt DC fast charging. And get this. It'll have 11 kilowatt charger, which is a regular charger, but it'll have 11 kilowatts of wireless charging as well. That's amazing. It'll have a sliding side door and a pair of rear double doors and a solar roof, which should be able to get you up to 15 kilometers of additional range every day and a cargo capacity of 800 kilograms or 764 pounds. Now, a lot of people say to us, you're always down on other cars. Yes. Uh, We're not down on this one. Yeah. This has a, a great range. Um, it has a lot of features that you'd want and it's in a in a segment that is pretty much wide open. I mean, there are some electric utility vans. Their range is minuscule and they don't look that great. The, the only thing I have against this car is that um, it's probably not coming out until 2020 or 2022. Like they, they haven't mentioned a date. We're just right. guessing because um, it's that platform. Right. The passenger version should be coming out 2022. Right. It, it's sad. I just, we want it now. Right. Like if it was out now. And so, I mean, our anger be... is only that VW isn't just like tooling it up and going. Right. Like, let's do it. Obviously it takes some time to, to make it and stuff like that. But I mean, Again, they should have been doing this years ago. Right. But people are excited by this form factor. Yeah. Now, another 
car that's out uh, is the Audi e-tron, and this special edition one is hitting the market first in Q2 of 2019 at $86,700. That's before incentives. It'll be followed by a base version starting at $74,800. Again, before incentives. Mm -hmm. It's going to have 400 kilometers of range. The rear-wheel drive e-tron is capable of 165 kilowatts of output, but 25 kilowatts is reserved for boost mode. What's boost mode? That is, uh, if you want to uh, go the fastest it can go, you oh. got to have boost mode. Um, the front motor is capable of 135 kilowatts with 10 kilowatts reserved for uh, boost mode. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, and Audi says that it'll be able to go 0 to 60 miles an hour in 5.5 seconds. And I just want to compare this a little bit to the Model X because people do say the same thing to us, like you're just crapping on the e-tron. Right. The base Model X has a 0 to 60 time of 4.9, so that's, uh, you know, half a second more. But does uh, it so matter? No, that is not right. the point that matters to but, me. Uh, so we're not crapping on the car. It, right. It's got very similar numbers to the Model X. Um, what I guess I'm upset about is that Audi and VW, they seem to think that the charging infrastructure in, in Europe is all set for their cars. Right. And um, yes, this car can be fast charged that's not as fast as a supercharger. Right. And those those fast chargers are not in the same placements as superchargers. I wanna point out that many of them are at say a Nissan dealership or a VW dealership. And so you drive around back and they're only usually open during business hours. And there's usually one or two slots and you don't know if they're taken usually ahead of time. Right. Whereas a supercharger, you don't need a card. There's usually six, eight, 10, 12 chargers. You know ahead of time which ones are taken. And they're usually on the right place on a route to get, you know, they're right off the highway usually right. and with some food nearby and, and, and hotels. So I'm just saying from a supercharger point of view, from charging infrastructure point of view, VW and Audi, they just don't seem to get it. It's You're not going to be able to use your e-tron in the same way that you can use a Tesla. Right. And that is why when you have two very similarly priced cars... Um, you know, maybe you love the interior of the Audi. Maybe you just want to drive an Audi because you always drive Audis. That's fine. That's great because, I mean, we're getting this this audience of, of people who are like, I wanted an electric car, but I only drive Audis. That's great. Those guys are going to buy the, the electric car. That's, they wouldn't have bought one otherwise, apparently. Right. But I, I, I don't think that, you know, as competition goes, I just want them to have at least one thing that they're better at the Model X about. And a lot of people are like, it's the interior. I don't know. I mean, I it, doesn't, it. it doesn't look as fresh and as right. updated. You know, sure, it has a screen and everything, but it's not Can the we talk same about size. interior, Jesse? Yes. The Peugeot concept. Yes, Check this let's out. Let's talk about this thing. Velvet is making a comeback. Oh. Uh -huh. All right, but let's look at this. Uh, let's ignore the velvet for now. Let's let's. Pretend. I don't know if you can it's... ignore the velvet. <laughs> eh? So this is a concept car uh, by Peugeot. Um, they say that it'll have a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack. It'll enable 600 kilometers of range. That's 373 miles based on the WLP That's standard. That's fantastic. They aim to add 500 kilometers of range in 25 minutes for charging. That's great. Um, and they want to offer induction charging. Yeah, so induction charging, by the way, wireless charging. Right. Cool. It'll have 340 kilowatts of power. That's uh, 456 horsepower, all-wheel drive, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, or 0 to 60 acceleration in less than four seconds, nice. and a maximum speed of 220 kilometers an hour. That's 137 miles per hour. Awesome. Build it. Great. Build it. Uh, I don't know about the velvet seats. Uh, I want them. I mean, it's... Just I, don't spill your ice cream Yeah, I mean, it's. I guess it's for people who don't have kids or people who don't need to drink fluids. I don't know. Whatever. It's time for the lightning round. Here we go. Model X got in a plane crash. What, it flies? Uh, the plane did. It sounds like it didn't. That was the problem. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's talk about this. A DEA plane in Houston, Texas... Uh, crashed into a Model X, uh, among other cars. Yeah, everyone was okay, from yeah. what I understand. Uh, the the DEA were doing a training flight with three pilots. It had to make an emergency crash landing, and it hit a Model X. I just want to point out that even after it got hit by a plane, the Falcon wing door still worked. <laughs> That's amazing. Fantastic. Tesla <laughs> increases the supercharger idling fees. So you may have remembered back in December of 2016 um, that they introduced a 40 cent per minute idle fee if 50% uh, of the... Uh, chargers at a supercharger station were full, um, they would start to 
give you a fee to get you to move your car so that other people could charge their cars. Well, they've just increased this fee. Uh, it is now going up to 50 cents per minute if you're at a station that is at least 50% full. If the station is 100% full, the fee goes up to a dollar a minute. There's a five minute grace period. So if you move your car within the five minutes, that, that fee gets waived. And here's a chart, uh, depending on the country you're in, that fee varies obviously so check right, your country uh, not everyone uses dollars and it looks like the model 3 is going to be getting a key fob so, check this out these are from uh, photos from the fcc because mm -hmm. you have to apply to the fcc for permission to you know get your frequencies and all that yep um model x model s they have key fobs and but the model looks, 3 hadn't had one up until now right looks like they're getting one it looks very similar to the model s and x key fobs. i'm glad they're doing this mm -hmm. i mean i know it was cool to have your phone and to have the card which you can still use mm -hmm. but they're not 100 percent reliable well at least the phone was not 100 percent reliable right. and the in the card key was just kind of a pain a little inconvenient yeah uh, having the fob in your pocket means you don't have to touch it you just walk up to the car it knows you're there doors unlock yeah, I, I think that this is like good, it. having another entry point to the car. GM shelves their diesel development. <laughs> Cadillac president Steve Carlisle said, we have been working on diesel, but the markets may be changing more quickly than we anticipated. Huh. Who knew that poisoning people would make people upset? Even after the 2015 VW Dieselgate scandal, Cadillac kept working on diesel versions of their cars, but now a diesel Cadillac is, quote, on hold. This is a Sorry, good thing. Jesse, you can't get your diesel Cadillac. Oh, no. But, I mean, this is great because, you know, it shows that we can affect That's right. the system. We, the customers. Yes. yes. If we say, you know, this is ridiculous, how dare you? And they probably also are going like, well, we can't really make diesel clean because mm -hmm. otherwise we would just release it. You hear the FUD all the time, mm -hmm. but there's actually some smart people that do get it. And Tony Sakanaji from Bernstein, which is an analyst group, uh, he seems to get it. Mm -hmm. um, so here's some quotes from an upcoming report that he has going out to his investors. He says, there is no credible competition to Tesla. Tesla is an unparalleled brand. Let's make this clear. There is no actual flood of competition coming. We've tallied up every announced electric vehicle arriving in the U.S. between now and 2022, and the results were stark. Model 3, quote, faces no credible competition whatsoever until 2020 or until Volvo launches their all-electric Polestar 2 sedan, they said. Model S and Model X will only face two competitors, Audi's e-tron, Quattro, and the Jaguar I-Pace up until 2020, the analyst said. While matching the range and price point of the Model 3, the Bolt arguably remains a lower-end car without the luxury nameplate, the styling, the performance, or even the electronics offered by Tesla. Wow. Yeah. An analyst yeah. putting the Bolt in its place. And uh, like he set a, a near-term price for Tesla stock at 325 Now, Ford recently announced their autonomous semi-concept, and our buddy Carson went to the uh, German car show and took some cool video of it. This is an all-electric, uh, concept electric tractor with level four self-driving. Now Ford didn't provide any details about the F-Vision electric powertrain or range, but they did announce the most important thing, Jesse, mm -hmm. that what the that? futuristic aerodynamic design was inspired by Marvel superheroes. Great. That's what Good. matters, for. That's important. Get those so, movie tie-ins because that is how you <laughs> sell cars. All right, it's time for our video contributor story. This week, we've got our buddy Sergio in Brazil. Take it away, Sergio. Hi, Zach and Jesse. My name is Sergio, and I'm currently living in Brazil. This is the only Tesla probably existing in Brazil. There may be two or three more, but these cars are imported. This is probably the most expensive Tesla in the world. In Brazilian reais, it's 900,000. That will come to about 250 thousand dollars so the store where the tesla is being sold it's located in a very famous avenue in sao paulo called avenida europa that's europe avenue with a lot of sophisticated car stores with european cars some american cars and uh, mostly expensive cars and the people who are used to buy them like to show their trophies on sundays especially a sunny Sunday like today, although we're in, right in the middle of winter. Nearby, there is a, an amazing sweet store called Offner. It's one of the best. So if you ever come to Sao Paulo, don't forget to visit this place. I just had the best 
Brazilian cappuccino I've ever had. It's made with chocolate and it's very dark, creamy, not very sweet, just amazing. All right, okay, I love you guys. I watch all your shows and I hope you like this video and take care. See you next time. Ooh, I'm hungry now. I'm starving. Sergio, right. why did you do that? That was that not was cool. mean. We should have probably oh. censored that footage. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. That everyone got is now the stopping the video and going yeah. for like some popcorn. I know. My whatever. gosh. All right, it's time for our Patreon bonus stories. That's where you go over to Patreon and uh, we give you stories. Yeah. So you support us. We help you. It's a you know it's a scratch your back kind of thing. Symbiotic right? relationship. Yeah. So yeah. go help us. Hey, we're back from our Patreon bonus stories, and we want to do our Patreon shout-outs. Who we got this week, Jesse? We got Matt Krakoff, Jacob Denisbo, Daniel Berquist, James Gretsch, Chris Kinman, George Hohenberger, Gregor Wallace, and Jonathan Dickinson. Thank you so much for supporting the show. We couldn't do any of this without you. It would look... We'd have to have a cell phone we have to hold it the whole time my arm would get tired all right it's time for elon's tweets of the week elon gets help with scam spammers so he um he got this uh little help i guess this week from um jackson he said uh um jackson if you can help get rid of the annoying scam spammers that would be much appreciated and he did he sent them some script i guess and they chatted and running on some kind of thing thing. i just i want to say yeah if you're twitter Uh uh-huh help out a billionaire will you um how about your platform looks yeah Ugh. I I mean I don't use Twitter and that's one of the reasons why. Yeah, I mean we can't trust like that's, I mean just what looks just like Elon's account right. is is a spam Bitcoin guy right. who, who's trying know, to steal your Ethereum. Right. So he like, tweets out stuff right after Elon does that looks like it's, it's Elon. like oh by the way and that should be um hello Twitter find the cl- clean find it up. these people. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it just is it totally is ridiculous. It's so awful. Then Elon tweeted out uh, hashtag Occupy Mars and Beardy Man said, Genuine question, dude. Don't you think a constitution charter should be written up before colonization to prevent the same corruption and injustice that has plagued humanity on Earth from debasing society out there? If so, shall we draft it? Perhaps using a specific subreddit? Elon got back and said, This is definitely worth thoughtful debate. What might we do differently to improve human life and happiness? What other that's people are talking about? That's cool. Like, and, and here's the thing, we are going to Mars and we right. should be thinking of this because do we just adopt the same constitution? Like, does the United States constitution or the, you know, some other country's constitution become the constitution of right. Mars? No. And these are, I mean, like, you know, these are great constitutions that, you know, that we made hundreds of years ago. But we can improve them. But I mean, like, there's a whole bunch of new stuff yeah. that and, happened since and, 200 years ago. And also new ways of running our worlds like i mean did presidents make sense anymore let's talk about this stuff yeah like there's a lot that we should cover here yeah we shouldn't be basing this off of you know 18th century so i guess our new government's gonna come from subreddit pretty cool i mean let's talk about it (laughs) you know get as many people you know you could get more people talking about it than you could possibly get in the 1700s that's true you'd have to have this giant room everyone would have to be quiet Mm -hmm. you know I <laughs> decree that this be the fall with due tally bonkers. And uh, that would have to be how everyone would have to say. <laughs> I say that that not be a thou doofin stone. Sit down, Jacob. <laughs> yeah. We're tired of hearing it. By the way, <laughs> did I mention that you can buy Ethereum? <laughs> time for community mail time. All right, William got his new Model 3. Just picked up my Model 3 yesterday. I love it. I want to thank you and everyone that works on the channel for the videos and the great information regarding the Model 3. I drove 340 miles from the Eden Prairie, Minnesota Service Center to my home in Grand Forks, North Dakota. It wouldn't be possible without the long-range battery and the supercharger reviews. Clearwater, Minnesota. Wow, North Dakota. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. up there. All right. And he says... 896 days of waiting was worth it. That's a lot of days worth waiting for, huh? Mm -hmm. I want to thank Karsten because he went to the uh, International uh, Automotive Show in Germany and he got this cool footage of the Mercedes Vision Urbanetic, which is, I don't know what this thing is, but it looks cool. We're going to look into this, Karsten, Mm -hmm. so we can uh, cover it for you. Caroline in Denver, Colorado, she sent us this video from um, the Electric Car Week event, and it seemed like a lot of fun. So definitely go to her YouTube channel where she covered, like, you can see all the cars there. One of the things I spotted was an electric uh, Denver, Colorado police Tesla. 
Yeah. What? Yeah. Why have I not heard about this I know, this exactly. One? So I don't, maybe Caroline could tell us more about that. But, oh, and just, there's this funny part here where they go to this tent and the, and the cameraman's like, hey, do you know about Zach and Jesse? And the guy's like, no. <laughs> As Zach and Jesse, if you know who they are. I, I know. Okay. Now you know. Now I know. Now you know. Thank okay. You. Did you know that there's a Model 3 in Croatia, Jesse? No. Alexander, show us. Hello, Zach and Jesse. This is Alexander speaking for the second time. From Croatia, here we are today on September 21st in the capital of Croatia, Zagreb, where we have an official presentation of Tesla Model 3 on our flower square near the center of Zagreb. Besides US version of Model 3, we have exhibited one Model X100D and one S90D with the second generation of AP hardware. So, it seems that in Croatia, in Europe, in its capital, we have the first unofficial presentation of Model 3 in Europe. Bye bye. That is so cool. Yeah. All right, it's time for our Patreon viewer question. We've changed this. It used to be the Patreon viewer comment, but we thought, hey, Maybe it would be more interesting to give us a question. Yeah, so uh, ask us anything. This is this week comes from William Gregory. He says, "What are the top three to five things that new owners should be aware of with the Model Three, such as apps, accessories, or settings features that may not be obvious?" So our first it's a great question. It's a great question. The first quick answer would be, I think we both thought of this like right off the top of our yeah. head, would be that you want to do route planning. Right. Because so I mean, if you want to do a long route where you're like, I want to go you know, many hundreds of miles. Uh, Normally you use, you know, Google Maps or something. Right. Uh, and you just assume that there's a gas station along the way. But that's not the case with electric cars, but it's pretty darn easy. Uh, use something like a better route planner, uh, EV trip planner, uh, an EV tripping. Yeah, All those of are, those. I mean, there's plenty more, but... Uh, those are three good ones. Those are three really good ones. And so uh, coming soon to the Model 3, you'll be able to actually pull up the web and do this on your screen. But for now, you're going to have to either do it at home first or on your phone. Right. Uh, the next thing would be, if you're going on a longer-ish trip, would be a plug-in cooler. So this is just like a regular cooler, except well, it's like a little refrigerator. You don't need any ice, so nothing gets all soggy and wet and damp. It just uses a 12-volt... Uh, outlet cigarette lighter adapter um, goes right into your car and you can basically have a cooler keeping all of your food cool for your long distance road yep. trips we used it on our cross-country road trip um, and it worked fantastic uh, we'll put the amazon link down below so you can go check it out maybe get one for yourself Next would be all-weather floor mats. Um, we live in New England, which has salt and, and snow and sand during the winter, and it right. really can gum up your, your car's floor mats. So we got these from Evanex. We tested them out all winter. They were great. Um, and again, link down below so you can check those out if you are interested. And then lastly, we made a video, just came out, part one at least, uh, the complete guide to our Model 3. And so check that out because we have a whole lot of like hidden things, things you wouldn't have thought of. I mean, you're going to have to watch it pretty quick because version 9 of the software is going to come out pretty soon and make the whole thing obsolete but so, um hey. you know, maybe hold off i don't know whatever you want to do <laughs> but that hopefully answers some of your questions there it's time for supercharger reviews what do we got hey guys just wanted to give my supercharger review of the one at brandon florida i'm here with my new model 3 that i just picked up on tuesday and over here there is eight stalls at this one um it's accompanied by a strip mall and then if you go across the street there is a Apple store and Starbucks and a huge mall that you can go to all different kind of places in there. And I would rate this about a six out of 10. It's uh, pretty accessible, but um, it could be kind of hard to find. And Google Maps will actually put you out on this side and you have to do a U-turn, so. But overall, pretty good. Hey, Zach and Jesse, John here, Lumberton, North Carolina, Supercharger, just a four stall here. But it is right behind a Texas Steakhouse and they offer 20% off to Tesla owners. So if you like steak, there you go. Um, there's a lot of shopping around here, pretty good. Uh, I came through here three nights ago around one in the morning. There was nothing open except for a gas station right here and they didn't even have restrooms that were available, uh, unfortunately. But other than that, I give it a nine out of 10. See you guys later. Hey Zach and Jess, this is Michael uh, up here in Des Moines, Iowa, West Des Moines, eight stall supercharger. Once again, like here in a lot of the ones in the Midwest, in Iowa and Minnesota, 
They are actually located in a high V, which is a grocery store in this part of the country. So uh, inside the store, you do have a uh, very good food to eat, and obviously it's a grocery store. So just coming to you, letting you know there's an eight stall supercharger here in West Des Moines, and uh, sporting your shirt here for everybody to see. Give it a great work, guys. Welcome, Jack and Jesse, to the supercharger in Herbolzheim. I'm reporting from the very new supercharger here in the southwest of Germany and we are having here 10 stalls. Right across the street is a Burger King and if you walk a little bit longer distance, just more 50 meters more, you have a McDonald's. Especially with this supercharger here you have a huge windmill and with this electricity the Teslas are charged directly. No, this is not true. I think uh, this windmill was before the supercharger was here. Between the McDonald's and the Burger King there is a hotel placed and you have a restaurant there and a bar. The supercharger is placed behind this huge truck parking just there. When you are here at Herbolzheim you normally go to the Europa Park Rust. This is the world's largest theme park, larger than those in Florida and in California and mostly rated as the top one of the amusement parks in the world. Here's a little sign. If you don't want to eat with McDonald's or Burger King or this other hotel there, you can eat here. They have quite a nice menu. It's a normal pit stop station, what you have here in Germany. Here at the gas station, you also can buy the vignette. Yeah, this is the, the small plaquette you need for Switzerland. Uh, if it comes to rating, I would give this uh, supercharger an 8, maybe a 7 out of 10. Uh, Highly rated because due to the many possibilities you have here nearby. Some negative point is this huge truck park here and they're always running the machines. Uh, it's a little bit noisy and a little bit smelly. My name is Markus Meinschein, also known as Tesla Markus. I'm, I'm having a YouTube channel and also Instagram and Facebook. And I was very happy to introduce you to this nice supercharger here with the 10 stalls in Southwest Germany. Bye bye. All over the place. We've got them all over the place. Wow. It's, if you this, want to see all of them in one place, we have them all in one place. Uh, you go to yeah, I don't think nowyouknowchannel.com. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a supercharger section. You can see every supercharger, every destination charger in the world. Right. Um, and it's always updated. Always updated whenever anyone, and, it, and you can do this yourself, upload your review. And then it will be there. It'll be live. Right. You, like immediately. You can, uh, there'll, there'll be a little green dot next to the destination and superchargers that are, that have reviews. And we're the only, that I know of, the only site that has the video reviews. Right. So go check those out because. And we love them. That's the best way to know what a place looks like. Right. And what's around there right. is people. Can I walk like my you. dog? Right. Is there trash? Super helpful. Speaking of the world, there uh, is one new supercharger this week wah, in wah, the world. Wah. It is uh, number 229 in China. Number 1,360 in the world is the 18th stall at Hangzhou at Hans uh, in China. Is, is that like a supermarket? No, I think that's uh, like Han Solo's bar. Oh, wow. Like, uh, that would be cool. They got those, uh, they got the creatures, the, da, 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 those, those creatures. It's time for Be Free, which is businesses for rewarding Elon employees. If you want to check it out, if you're a Tesla employee, there are 48 businesses around the world ready to give you free or highly discounted services and products. And not just Tesla employees. Right, that's true. Boring company, Boring company Neuralink, SpaceX, yep. you name it. Head over to nowyouknowchannel.com slash uh, be free. Yep, and, and I mean, this week we've got All Boars Design. They're gonna give a free logo design. I will design a logo based on your description and we'll send it to you in a few different formats at no cost. Go Elon employees. And he has started, he worked on our in-depth new intro that we're trying to see if we're gonna go with or not because right. Bobby's like been crying because you know, he came up with a really cool intro and now we got another cool intro. We right. don't know what to do. So, so we've asked our Patreons. Our Patreons are voting on that currently. We have 48 businesses, Jesse, that are giving free stuff. We want to get to at least 100 as soon as possible. So yep. if you're a business, get on our website, put your deal up there. You will get advertising from us right. and you will help out these Elon employees who it's giving a perk to them to give them an extra incentive to work for the best entrepreneur in the world right and you're making the world a better place that's right we like to uh bring a focus a spotlight if you will on a previous video that we've worked mm -hmm. on because we have over 500 of them and, and uh, that's too much there's too is, many to you expect you to watch all of them i expect you to watch i don't all think i've even watched all of them 
But this one... I somehow made them all, but didn't watch them. This one is uh, one of our Autonomous Driving Future series. It's why traffic will disappear in the future. You know, I've been on my way to work recently. I've noticed that the traffic has just been atrocious because of back to school. Yeah. Somehow... Mm -hmm. Children going to school slows down traffic on the highway. Yep. I don't know how that works. Mm -hmm. it, it does. It makes me feel better knowing that there will be no traffic in the future. And if you wonder how on earth that is possible, you should watch that video. All right, it's time for a Patreon giveaway. And uh, we're going to be giving away a t-shirt from SFSF. You can pick it yourself. It's the Patreon giveaway. How do you get your name in here, Jesse? Everyone who supports us on Patreon, every dollar that they uh, give us a month turns into a card. Turns into it's the most convoluted thing, it's, it's but it's very complicated. But it is the most fair <laughs> that we could possibly come up with. So yes. here we go. All right, give this a good little spinaroonie here. Yeah, you're mixing it up good. Got to get it going the other way. All right, for the people in Australia, because it's ah, good point. You know, it spins counterclockwise, right? Yep. What name are you getting out of this? Digging in there. All right, gosh. All right, who's our winner, Jesse? Arlene Allen. Congratulations, Congratulations, Arlene. You get a free t-shirt of your choosing from the SFSF store. That's fantastic. Uh, Put a name back way, in. Name goes right back in because Want a chance to win. that is how the fairness works. We did some math. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Wait, of what are these names that are Tesla going Time by? News. Every one of these names is a Patreon supporter who supports us for $5 or more a month. Um, they have previously gotten shout outs on the show, but we figured, you know, they shouldn't be forgotten to the to the annals of history. They should, we should always be seeing their names because they've made this show possible. Why are some names it's, bigger than other names? Uh, again, the fairness thing. It's uh, how much they, they give to support us uh, oh, okay. so, changes the font size. Okay, so $5 or more, the smaller names, and mm -hmm. then a, a bigger amounts are the bigger names. Yes. Oh, that's really cool. So we, you know, try and that's make really it cool. as fun. Now, how can you possible. support us if you don't want to be a Patreon? If you don't want to, you know, like Patreon get... doesn't work for everybody, mm -hmm. um, and that's totally fine. But if you're like, you know, if you watch this show every week and you're just like, this is great, but I am, you know, I, I don't have extra money. Um, if you're buying things on Amazon, you can use our Amazon affiliate link. We just figured out how to have other countries use our uh, Amazon affiliate link. So there's one for the U.S. and then there's also one for the rest of the world. Um, the international version will send you to your country's mm -hmm. uh, Amazon page and everything you buy, a small percentage will go to ours. Not, not a tiny percentage, pretty good. So instead of it going to Jeff Bezos, it's going to us. I want to remind everyone that if you want these cool shirts that yeah. we're wearing, you can find them at the SFSF shop um, slash support now, you know. And the link's right down there. Right down there. Click it if you're like, oh, that would be great for that And they that have a lot of cool designs. Right. It's I mean, a good gift. Right. They sell mugs, sweatshirts, all sorts of things. Right. I mean, Halloween is coming up. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you give presents on Halloween, but a lot of cool Tesla and space things. I know. And then, if you want to listen to us as a podcast, right? If you're um, sick and tired of me, looking, at someone asked us. me this week. They're like, "On my Model Three, I can't get you guys on um, the TuneIn and the Slacker." And I was like, "That's because you need a premium TuneIn, oh, that's unfortunately." Nice. But you could bring your phone, Spotify, Spotify, Spotify works, Stitcher, iTunes. Yep. Um, that those will all work. So you can listen to us as Bluetooth through your phone. Right. And if you're like, um, if you're thinking of getting a performance Model 3, a Model S, or a Model X, you can use our referral code. You will get $100 of free supercharging. Although I think if you do it before September, before the end, end of the September, month, you might even be able to get it for free it, for life. For life. We're not sure. Don't hold us to that. But one thing that you will absolutely get for sure, if you live in the United States, Southern Canada, or Europe, we will drive to your house in a next generation Tesla Roadster. We will sit you down in either the passenger or the driver's seat, depending on you know your skill level. Wow. Uh, and uh, we will buckle you in. Yeah, and, and then uh, hopefully we'll buckle in your eye eyebrows mm -hmm. and your and your eyeballs Maybe put to some, make sure like, they don't fall out. Glasses on. Something. Uh, Put protective covers over the seats. That's very important for vomit. <laughs> like for what? All, body, bodily all fluids. Number of bodily <laughs> fluids. And uh, we will accelerate uh, zero to 60 in less than two seconds. Wow. And I then, know what that feels like. So, I mean, you know, make sure you know your local police departments. And Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very funny. You know, make sure you have uh, you know who your local police chief is. Oh, yeah. Maybe bring uh, the police chief with you. Maybe. Just make sure that he knows <laughs> that uh, if he hears a sonic boom, that it's okay. <laughs> maybe find a street that's rather straight and not busy. Plan ahead a little bit because right. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a pretty serious thing, right? 
you know, this is not just a, a little trophy piece. Obviously, you get the Instagram picture, the Facebook video, right. the live. And a moment you won't forget. Whatever you want. Yeah, definitely he, don't forget. He hasn't forgotten that he didn't get that moment yet. It's fine. But it's coming. Because I'm going to be the only one who's going to be able to drive it. <laughs> Why? Wait, what? Well, you can drive if you want, but I mean, you're not going to want to because it's just going to be so like, you know, right? <laughs> What? I'm doing training, right? I'm doing physical. I'm like uh, doing the, the the pilot training stuff. The, oh, I see. So the, you get knocked blood, out. The blood. Oh, know, right. We be, need the special. Hook, hook, you know the G four stuff. I stayed awake. Mm. And don't forget about racing the semi. People right. seem to forget about this. If you're like, you can win. If you're like if, Jesse Zach. I can't afford a Tesla. What are you crazy? I'm like 12 yeah. years old. Well, okay, I don't know if I they're gonna let you drive the semi. Drive the semi. Never. If you're 12 years old, I'm really sorry, bud. But you know, your mom or dad point, could ride it. Some point. Yeah. So anyway, use our referral code to sign up for the newsletter. It's free, and you'll have a chance of racing the semi truck, um, and we're gonna race it against right. you. And Jesse will win. One other thing is, you can use our referral code for for solar projects. So oh, yeah, if you're like, true. you know what, I got the electric car. It's time to get the solar on mm -hmm. the roof. You can use our referral code for that. Yeah. What does that get you? Uh, that gets you. Uh, five-year extended warranty on your solar project. Thank you to all of you amazing viewers. People who watch to the end, uh, we try and make it a little fun because we're a little loopy at the end of the show. <laughs> yeah, we um, ran out of oxygen. It's, yeah, we've done a lot of talking. So uh, thank you so much for watching. You make the show possible. Now, now you know. know.